Well, welcome back to Life on Cars. I hope you're all well. Today's episode is all about a, quite frankly, shocking and dangerous and quite scary fault that I found on the Rolls Royce recently and how that came about and how I resolved it. So buckle up. It's a bit of a scary one. And it starts off with a fairly routine job. And, uh, and then like a lot of things on old cars, things escalate. So go and grab yourself a cup of tea and uh, we'll see exactly what occurred. Let's go. That, that fuel filter there looks like it's been on since Adam was a lad. Um, God, how long's that fuel filter been on there? It's not too bad to get to while I'm laid under the back of the car here. So uh, can you see on the end of that union there? At some point in its life, this car, probably early on, it's been really well wax oiled. You can see the wax oil um colour on the end of that union and it, it's it's really protected the floor on this car it's absolutely in excellent condition um, so yeah whoever decided to get it wax oiled um, thank you because it's uh, it's just it's just protected the car but yeah I'm gonna change that fuel filter so intracar help I need a fuel filter <laughs> Right, here we are then, fuel filter and it's the UE74370 from Intracar. Just can't fault Intracar, they just are so quick at getting parts out, literally like next day. And um, they seem to really be on the game. Okay, there it is, Alco. Does it come with the all-important copper washers? Yes. Yep, these are very important. You've got to replace the uh, seals on the fuel pipe. So, uh, well done, Intercar. Top tip for uh, replacing a fuel filler, just make sure there's no residual pressure in the tank just by uh, slapping off the fuel cap. I'm as high as a kite now off the petrol fumes. Um, I couldn't fill the whole procedure because there was a lot of petrol running out and it had to be quick. Um, but it's not too bad. There's a couple of clamps which I haven't tightened up yet, so I'm just going to do that in a minute. Um, this is a banjo. Um, get a light banjo at that end with a copper washer each side. That crocks, cracks off quite easily. The one that had me thinking just for a few minutes is the back one there. Can you see there's like a union that goes onto another union that then goes into the filter? Well, the, the un this, this union here the uh, the outer one on the pipe. Let me just shut the light down. Oh god, I'm a very good angle here. Right. Yeah, that that there, I think that's like a compression fit um, onto the fuel pipe because that won't, that doesn't wind off. So basically the way to do it is to take the clamps down, remove that, and then crack that inner union off from the filter and then spin the filter out. Uh, this pipe stays stationary, that's loose, spin the filter out and then put another one back in quick but yeah there was a bit of petrol coming out so uh, I had to do that quite quickly. Let's get the brackets on. Just tighten these, bra these uh, brackets back up which are holding the filter in place. 
Just tighten them up nice and evenly. There we are. Right. Let's do a final check of the unions. And there we have it, a nice new fuel filter installed. You can see the direction of flow there. You can't really get it wrong because the unions are different sizes on different ends. The component next to it is the fuel pump. So yeah, do you know what? I think that was the original filter that was still fitted to this car, 30 year old. Yeah, I think there's a good chance this is the original fuel filter. <laughs> The reason I'm saying that, it's it's a Bosch, which kind of ties in with some of the components on the on the Spirit. But the other thing that's making me think is, it, this has been on since it was wax oiled. See that band of wax oil? So, you know, the wax oil must have happened very early on in the car's life. Um, if not in the factory, I don't know. Were these, were these wax oiled in the factory? Maybe somebody can answer me that question, but whatever, it was it was ready for a change, wasn't it? Deary, deary me. Oh, guys, another curveball on the Rolls-Royce. Can you see that fuel pipe there that goes up onto the tank and then it goes down the fuel pump? It's porous, it's leaking. And on closer inspection, and you can probably see that on the video there, it looks like it's been chewed. I think when this was abandoned in the back of the car park there in Nottingham, uh, I think there's been a little mouse up there and something's had a little bite out of the pipe. Along, Can you see there's a few bite marks? Uh, and unfortunately the pipe's porous, you can just see it's dripping there. It's weird, you know, because ever since I've had this car and I've had it up and running, um, I have noticed a slight whiff of fuel smell coming from the um, when I've opened the boot. And I uh, never thought now of it because there was nothing dripping on the floor, but it's, 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 le it's letting go now. I thought it was that clamp which I've just tightened up, but on closer inspection it's coming from the back of the pipe. God damn it! That's going to be a real mess to change as well because basically when I pull that pipe off all the fuel from the petrol tank is going to come out. Now there isn't a huge amount of fuel in the tank but... Uh, this ain't good at all. I need to get hold of some fuel pipe. Sharpish and get this done. So... Uh, man well that escalated quickly uh, so yeah I was doing the fuel filter as you've seen and then uh, I put the ignition on and cranked the engine to, to see if the fuel filter was sealed properly which it was but it was a fuel leak what I think's happened there is because the, I put a new fuel filter on the initial surge of pressure in the system to build up, because the fuel filter was empty, it, the, the fuel pump will have supplied a little bit more pressure to uh, to, ref to refill the uh, filter and obviously supply petrol to the engine. And that's just been enough to, uh, to end up with that pipe um, going porous. So uh, it's a bit of a nightmare when that happens because you've got to drain the tank and I wouldn't have been able to sleep tonight knowing there was petrol dripping on the floor in the garage, for obvious reasons. But luckily, Mrs. Life on Cars was in, so I asked her to be the fire warden, and we rigged up some tubs, and we basically decanted about 30 litres of fuel out of the Rolls Royce, and now it's empty, thank God. So you can see I'm just getting the last dregs out now. The pipe's off. But yeah, we've, we've ended up getting about 30. 30 litres out, so uh, not good fun at all, but um, that should stop dripping soon 
and I can take the pipe off and then we'll have a look at it. It's only a short rubber hose, but it's right on the bottom of the fuel tank and it's the direct feed for the fuel pump. I've got all three doors open in the garage to keep the fumes to a minimum level for safety. And uh, But yeah, scary stuff that when you have to drain a fuel tank. And, and uh, always worrying. Alright, there we are. There's the new fuel pipe installed. And we are now ready to go again. Wait till you see the old pipe. It's a shocker. An absolute shocker. Yeah, thanks again to Intracard. They got me this within 48 hours. So uh, I was relieved because the garage stunk of petrol. It, do you know, after I drained the field out, it was dripping for about 48 hours. Go figure. Anyway, yeah. Um, hose, tank to pump. And uh, you can barely see this because it's up above the differential. And that's why I didn't spot it before. So yeah. Um, when it was um, up in the air, I could see a few little marks like that, but then look at that. Unbelievable, isn't it? Something's been having a right old chew out with that, hasn't it? <sighs> Dear me. So yeah, massive save, because if I hadn't spotted it, so if I hadn't changed the fuel filter, this wouldn't have let go. I might have been booling down the road with 60 litres of fuel in the tank and suddenly it let go. And I would have been a massive fire hazard, petrol all over the place. God knows what would have happened. So um, yeah, massive, massive save. And a lot of relief as well. Nasty. So there you go then, uh, the fuel pipe problem has been sorted. And do you know what? Um, when the car threw me that curveball, I was starting to think, you know, what else is going to crop up on this car? But this is the nature of the game. When you're working with an old vehicle, I mean, it's 30 years old, this. There's a lot of Rolls Royces out there that are much older than my car. And these things can happen, you know. I thought about it. It's not the fault of the car. You know, the car was abandoned. It was backed into a hedge. And that's probably where the rodents have got in. Actually, I've put a positive spin on this that I think the car is actually trying to work with me because it's shown me that fault before I've ended up getting out and about on the road where it could have been a lot worse. So the, the car... I feel like it's trying to work with me. I don't know what you think. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already done that. It doesn't cost you anything. Check out the rest of the videos in the playlists if you're new to Life on Cars. And I'll see you all again very soon with the next instalment on the Rolls Royce or something else on Life on Cars. Take care now and I'll see you soon. Bye bye. Bye bye.